pastor of the church. And if you haven't heard that term before, just minister of the church. The lady in the pink, the good looking one up here, was my wife Barb, hallelujah. And uh, she co pastors with me, and we're delighted you're here this morning. It is such a joy to come and enter into God's house with joy in our hearts and really, really enjoy His presence. Uh, to some who are visiting with us again, man. They snuck in on me this morning, but we nobbled them as they came through the door. Wayne, it is so good to see you. Hallelujah. I'm Pat. I'm Pat. Hallelujah. It uh, really is good, and uh, we praise God. Can I just, a couple of other things. Next Saturday, Don. Two o'clock to four o'clock for friends and partners. Dot's involved in a work looking after orphans in Cambodia, Thailand. If you like to come And we'd like to make sure we've got everything for everybody who comes. So that's from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock uh, next Saturday afternoon. Come along uh, for that. And just one other thing I'd like to share. You know, uh, many of you, some of you will have heard, not everybody, but Dave Hope. You know, Dave. Good. So they took him in and replaced those last week, and he's making, he was making a great recovery. Then I got a phone call the other day to say they thought they'd had a stroke. And I went to visit him on um, Friday, yes, Friday morning, and I'm here to tell you he has got strokes, and I'm the Pope. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, Dave, uh, I know that when Pauline saw him, he got a droop uh, on the one side of his face and one arm was weak. But I saw him on Friday morning and he is well. Now, I, I want to say to you, please don't ring Pauline and say, oh, I am so sorry. She doesn't want to hear that. Pauline wants to hear, praise God, my husband is well, blessed, healed and going on strong. And I'm believing this week he'll be out of hospital and before long uh, he'll be back with us. So uh, if you can continue to give thanks for uh, David Hopes, that would be really wonderful because he is making a good recovery. In fact, he looked better on Friday after open heart surgery than he has done in months since he's been here. Suddenly all that grayness that was in his face has disappeared because his heart is now pumping blood around his body properly and he looks wonderful, so he does. Praise God. So good to be able to bring a good report in the name of Jesus. Well, we've had a great week this week with uh, the young people from Ohio. I don't know how to thank them enough. They have opened doors for us that have remained closed to us for a long time. And this week we have been in schools all around Rugeley. We've been in social action groups and uh, we were over at Tea and Toast on Wednesday, which is a little social action group over in Hensford. We were at uh, we're at Hensford, name of the, the Methodist Church. Trinity. Trinity, that's the one. And there they served, helped, and um, had a great time there. And it's just been wonderful. So I'm going to invite three of them to come and join me this morning. And they're going to share Diana, Alec, and Caitlin. Are they the three? Okay. Come on, girls. Yeah, give them a cheer. Go on there. Yeah. First, we just want to say thank you guys for all your hospitality um, and just everything you guys have done for us for welcoming us. Um, this week, we were able to go into the schools. Let me just, uh, this is a complete new ideal for us. We are not able to do this at home. So that was just a blessing in and of itself. And um, just to go in there and to share the word of God, it's a, it's a blessing anytime you can witness, is it not? Isn't it awesome? Yep. And just to have their complete attention. And we know that the word of God doesn't come back void. And God Amen. calls us to go out into his fields and to work. And that's what we did this week. And whether we see the results or not, we know that God's going to do something Amen. in one of their lives. And Hallelujah. if one, one is one to Christ, everyone sings, right? It's, everyone's rejoicing in heaven. So we just, we're hoping to see uh, something down the road. And we just want to thank you guys so much. And just what an awesome week it was for us. And, I just, thinking about all those kids and those teachers that got to hear the word of God, it's hard to witness sometimes, guys, but it's awesome to have their complete attention, yep. knowing that they heard the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, just want to say thank you guys for that. Amen. I just wanted to say thank you to all the people who opened their homes for us to um, 
go to home groups and take showers. I'm sure Joss was happy for us to take showers. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, we went to a home group. We split up into two groups, and I was with Josh's group. And I just wanted to point out how amazing it is that even though we come from across the ocean, that we can all praise God together. Amen. I was sitting down, and I had Joy here, and I had um, Vicky here, and they were all harmonizing, and... I can't harmonize at all, so I was just singing the regular words, but it just sounded so amazing. We could feel God. We could yeah. feel God with us and working in the room in people's hearts, and it's just so amazing that even though we're far from each other physically, but we're all brothers and sisters in Christ Amen. together, and it was just so amazing, and being here worshiping with you guys this morning is so cool. It's so different from our church, but it's amazing, and we just wanted to say thank you. Amen. Um, one of the things that blessed me the most on this trip was the uh, personal interactions I had with different people that I met and was able to talk to. And one of the ladies I talked to um, had had a stroke, and we were talking, and she was telling me how she doesn't go to church very often. She goes once in a while, and how um, that Saturday evening she was just really feeling called to go to church. And that Sunday morning she actually had a stroke in church, and it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because she lives by herself. So she, would, she said, I would not have been here if it wasn't for me have been in church. And um, it was really like she was getting very emotional about it. And she looked at me and she said, um, you don't need to worry about what you're going to do with your life. God's got it in his hands. And what he has he's going to do for you is way beyond anything you could ever plan to do for yourself. And it was really amazing because it was totally words that I really needed to hear. And it was, God had put it on her heart to tell me this, and it was definitely what I needed to hear, and it blessed me so much. So Wonderful. Thank you so much for opening up your homes and letting us come here and worship with you guys. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Vicki. Well, I could tell you a few stories now. Can we stop telling <laughs> uh, Way back, a long time ago. In the dark ages. In the dark ages, that's right. Vicky came to England. But she was very young. And God did an awesome work in her life and still does an awesome work in her life. But it's amazing to see how God will take you when you're a teenager. And here we are just a couple of years later. Just a couple. That's right. <laughs> Sets of triplets, twins, you know, just, you know, but a few years later, and now you're bringing teams. Yes. Awesome. Yes. You are such a blessing, young lady. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I don't believe we could express our gratitude to this church for receiving us um, this couple weeks. We just are overwhelmed with gratitude. And I work for In Motion Ministries, which is the ministry that brought this team. And I want to in extend an invitation to you. We thought it would be a really great idea, instead of always bringing teams to you, you bring one to us. Yeah? Wow. Yeah? So we have a plan. I get to work as the mission team planner in In Motion Ministries, so I'm going to plan a trip for you. So this trip will be to the, um, can you put that thing up on the thing? We would like to invite you to put a team together of 10 or more people. Um, they can be ages 14 and up, or if, you're, if they're, you want them younger, they need to be with an adult or uh, I mean a parent or guardian. We like all ages, even up through retired people. And we want to go to the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation in Montana. And... Um, we need to bring a touch from God, be the, be the hands and feet that bring love and grace in a tangible way. So although they are still in the United States, you will be headed to the mission field because this area is steeped in traditions and culture, and it's very unfamiliar. Um, you'll see poverty and extreme moral and social decay as this um, reservation is gripped by uh, the effects of addiction. And so being the hands and feet of Jesus in, in a very tangible way, you'll do things like maybe some um, construction and light maintenance, light construction kind of things. We'll do children's ministry, uh, play street basketball with the teenagers one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we'll be doing, uh, let's see, 
Oh, prayer walking is a really big deal. The pastor who works there has been a missionary on the reservation for 10 years, and he has not very well accepted in the beginning. 10 years later, he's finally finding, um, seeing some fruit. And most of what happens from the, of that fruit is he is very dedicated to intentional prayer walking. Some place on the reservation every single day is prayed over very intentionally. They will go to the edge of a property of somebody's house, stand on the ground of the property, and pray and claim those things for the Lord. The effects of that have been so great that um, not very long ago, there were about six house fires per week because, due to meth labs and, and drug cooking drugs and things like that. It has reduced to six every six months. Hallelujah. All Praise because God. of the prayer walking and God invading this reservation. You as a team would get to be a part of that. It's so effective that the reservation is filled with dogs and most of them are quite vicious. But when you're prayer walking, they come and sit at your feet in peace. And the Indians on the reservation want to know what in the world kind of God are you serving that makes my dog sit when he should be eating you. <laughs> so we will plan your trip. And um, we've added on, if you would like, um, a, just to fill, fill out, the, nine, the trip would be about nine days, so you would fly to Colorado, and um, it would have a training session for a couple of days at our facilities there in, at In Motion um, Ministries office, then we'll load up in a van and a trailer and drive to Montana, spend nine days there ministering, drive back and have about five days in Colorado for um, some R&R time and, and um, touring around. So um, if you're wondering about the price, it will be about um, a thousand pounds, I think we decided, for all of that, for a two-week trip. This would include um, your lodging, your food, your ground transportation, um, your all the ministry expenses, all the training, the full itinerary. We'll send a certified team leader with you. Um, and we'll, we'll completely take care of you the whole way. So the only thing that does not include would be the airfare and, and things like that. So, anything else? No. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Wonderful. Praise God. Well, if you're not up for next year, you have to get saving, baking lots of cookies, doing lots of things, cleaning a lot of cars. But it's roughly, it's, as she says, a thousand pounds for four, 14 days in the United States. That's all your travel, all your board, every meal included. And that's really good. Uh, the only thing I forgot to tell you was you sleep in a hammock and you have to walk most of the way. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> and now, and uh, then the airfare from London to Colorado, those direct flights with British Airways you can get through, they're around about five to six hundred pounds, but it changes depending on the value of the dollar at the time. And, uh, but for... It sounds a lot of money, but I want to tell you it's the most amazing thing to be able to go and do. Uh, both our children who are now pastoring, they went to uh, several places in the United States, but the place they loved the most was uh, Alaska. And uh, they went up to Alaska on two occasions and had a wonderful time. Even Dot got to Alaska with them and they let her home. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, they had a great time up there. It was really, really good. Okay, well, I'd just like to read a scripture to you. Then we're going to receive an offering, or tithes and offerings. But during the receiving of that, I'm going to ask the young people from Ohio if they'd like to come up and get ready to do your special. That would be really great. You're going to sing a song for us? Yep. That's... Okay. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing more wonderful than to give to Jesus for his work around the world. Like many of you know, last week, Barb and I were in Italy, and uh, somebody said, did you have a really nice holiday? I said, yeah, it was great. We did three churches in four days. And last Sunday morning, we drove three hours to get to the first meeting, did the church service, had lunch, and then drove another hour and a half to get to the next meeting. And uh, it was a busy few days. But, you know, even Italy, God is opening Italy up to us as a church. And we have got a pastor in the work in Naples last Sunday night came and said, the next time you're in Italy, will you come and minister in my church? 
And uh, I'm planning to go back and do a leadership training time in a place called Sorrento, uh, which is halfway between Naples and Potenza with these uh, churches inviting their leaders to come. But you know, you're having an impact around the world with what you give. I spoke with Pastors George and Hazel during the week and uh, in Kisumu and different parts of Africa and India. God is moving in our victory family worldwide. So as you give this morning, give cheerfully. Don't give grudgingly. Give with a cheerful heart. So in faith, believing that God's word and what God's promised, he will do in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's stand while the young people lead us in the song. You may, I hope you'll know it, I'm sure. Let's join in with them as they lead us in that. And we'll receive our tithes and offerings.
with all creation I see. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my and I will adore you. for your goodness to us, for how you've blessed us in our going out and our coming in, for how you've made us the head and not the tail, you've set us above and not beneath. Lord, I thank you these are not words of man, but they are your words. And Father, I thank you that your word says today that we are blessed, blessed beyond measure, and for that I am thankful. Thank you, Lord, that we can bring our gifts to you this morning. We say, take them, Father God, put your touch, your supernatural onto our natural and cause them, Lord God, to do this money, to do great things for your kingdom of pray in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen, amen. amen. Thank you. The children would like to go out there to uh, champions. That would be great. Are they gone? Wow. Whip them, whip them out quick this morning. Hallelujah. Okay, if you have your Bible with you. be in John chapter 14, and over the last period of weeks, we've talked about uh, Jesus, the name that saves, Jesus, the name that, that keeps, Jesus, the name that sustains, this morning I want to talk to you about Jesus, the coming King, Woo! hallelujah, you know, it is wonderful to know that Jesus is coming back for his bride. And if you know and love Jesus this morning, you are part of that bride. It doesn't matter whether you're from several thousand miles away or whether you're here in England or wherever it might be, the bride of Christ around the world, Jesus is coming back for, and that is worth praising God for. Amen. And uh, one of the things that, uh, as I've been looking at uh, the eschatology, which is the study of the end times, we're going to do that as a church, but it's going to take us about six or eight weeks to do that and I've started going through Daniel and the prophecies and trying to get a better grip on the book of Revelation so this morning I'm just going to talk generally about Jesus the coming king but we are going to study the book of Revelation and what I want to say to you is you may not understand Revelation now but as Ron Swanson the director of Bible school in Canada said to me on a DVD you may not understand Revelation now but by the time you finish this course you will understand Revelation you know he was true Hallelujah. I've been working my way through it, hour upon hour, day upon day, just studying with him, taking the Bible study course from the Bible school in Canada. And it is wonderful. And I look forward to, along with, some of the, with Christine and some of the others, we're going to present to you over a period of, it could be six or eight weeks. If it's ten, it's ten. But we're going to bring to you what's going to happen in our future in Christ Jesus. And you know something? It's exciting. You know, I want to ask you this morning, do you know what your future holds? You see, as, your, as a pastor this morning, I know that I am going to spend eternity with King Jesus. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter that the name which is above the building. It doesn't matter whether it says Baptist, charismatic, or whatever it might say. What is important is that Jesus is Lord of your life. Is G are you born again today? Because that's the qualification for getting to glory. And for those who are born again, that is born of the Spirit of the living God, the Word of God says you became a new creation, created in His image. He gave us a new life. Your mind you had has been renewed by the Word of God. God changes us on a daily basis if we are willing to submit to him. Now I've met people and they said, well, God's not doing much for me. And when I say, well, how much of you have you given to God? You see, God will do for you as much as you have given to him. So the challenge this morning is this. We know when, if you're here this morning and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I've got a good news for you. You're on your way to a place called heaven. Hallelujah. 
And Jesus is coming back for his bride. Now we could get into amillennial, premillennial, postmillennial, but we're not. We could get into a lot of other things this morning, but we're not. I want you to understand this morning, you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And his grace is sufficient to meet your needs, whoever you are. People have said to me in the past, but you don't know my past. I said, you don't know my Jesus. Because you see, the power of the blood of Jesus was so great that when Jesus gave his life upon the cross, it dealt with the sin of man forever. And now you may say, but well, you don't know how big my sin was. God does not weigh sin. Sin is not weighed in a scale. And so it doesn't matter whether it's big or whether it's small. It's sin that separates us from God. But the good news is today, if you invite Jesus into your life, ask him to forgive you, believe that he took your sin and your sickness and your pains and your sorrows at the cross of Jesus Christ, then the great news is the coming king is coming back for you. Jesus is the coming king. How do I know that? Because he said so. You know, if you look at John 14 and verses 2 and 3, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Isn't that awesome? Jesus is coming again for his church. He's coming for his bride. But the bride is made up of men and women who are born again.